Well, hi, I'm George Fenley, and I've been in the area for about, oh, I don't know, I got here June 25th of 2022, and I know what you all are thinking. You're thinking, okay, you probably realized I'm a minister. Don't hold it against me. <laughs> I know that it's sometimes intimidating to be in a church, and I never want you to feel intimidated here. Um, this is a, a, a church where we're very down to earth, very non judgmental, and we, we hope that we would be uh, a, a loving, caring influence in the community. But one of the things that um, really has helped me get through this life is music. And I would venture to say that every single person in this room loves music. Can I get an amen? <laughs> I know, that's kind of crazy. All it is is a Greek word, amen, which means agreed. We agree, music is amazing. How many of you like jazz? Raise your hand. All right, a few. How many of you like classical? Eh. Anyone like Bach? Okay, you're my friend. <laughs> All right, how many of you like didgeridoo? <laughs> It's that one that goes, Ow. it's down there, the Australian Aboriginal didgeridoo. Um, okay, bless my soul. How many of you like rock and roll? That away. I love rock and roll. So just a little bit about me before we get started. My dad was a professor of violin at CSU Sacramento. And he was professor of violin there from Nine, no, 66 when I was born, he moved, I was conceived in Laramie, and he got a job out here in 66, and he worked from 66 to 94, where at that time he became what they call Professor Emeritus. Anyone ever heard of that phrase? Okay, so he did that until he passed away in 02. And my mom concertized with him. She, she got her degree, her uh, bachelor's degree, in classical piano performance. And that was from the University of Laramie. And so just for all, of, how many of you parents brought your kids to take lessons? All right, several of you. And just, just, just for some uh, protocol here, I, I definitely have to have you present with your kids. And that's not just for their protection, it's for all of our protection, and also, as far as this class is concerned, it's for them to be able to have you as an accountability partner. Does that make sense? The best, my parents taught me something. They taught me, my mom taught me that there are piano parents, and my dad taught me that there are violin parents. And those are the parents who insist that their kids practice, that's it. And all I ask, actually, I'll say demand, I don't wanna sound controlling. All I ask is 30 minutes of practice, five days a week. How many of you can commit to that? I need some hands, come on. All right, you get two days off, just like your work schedule, right? All I ask for is 30 minutes a day, five days a week. And that is so important for parents to make sure that your kids do it. Now, I was one of those kids, I'll tell you what, my parents forced me to play and I hated every moment of it. Sierra, I hated it. <laughs> I hated playing piano. I despised it because I wanted to skateboard, I wanted to ride motocross, and I liked chasing after girls. <laughs> that was my life. But my parents were insistent and looking back, I'm gonna tell you all, I am so grateful. Seriously, I raised my two boys on a career of music. I was a high school choir and guitar instructor for seven years, and then I taught online music appreciation. Anyone ever heard of k12.com? Anyone? So I taught with them for 10 years. And you think, well, but wait a minute, why would you resign from such a cool job where you can work at home? 
Believe it or not, there's even classroom management in online teaching. <laughs> you know, the kids are just like, well, I mean, even my own kid, well, I won't tell you which one because I don't want you to judge him. But one of my kids, I had them enrolled in an online school. He disenrolled himself and his older brother so that I wouldn't find out about it. <laughs> So anyway, classroom management, ah, oh, it's just not something I'm very good at. But I love teaching music. And one of the, my most rewarding experiences was concerts. Concerts are a blast. Are there any choir singers here? Did you, anyone sing choir in high school? A few of you? It's just a total blast to perform. And I hope that we could do the same thing. This is, ultimately, you may, you may kind of freak out when I say this, this is a performance class. It's a performance class. And when you have a performance class, you've got to be non-judgmental. Does everybody follow? Everybody makes mistakes. I don't know how many of you have ever seen, anyone ever seen a dive bar band? All right, you know what it's like. They play Don't Stop Believing," and you're like, that just didn't sound like it. That, that did not sound like Journey, right? But when you hear a band that does it precisely, you're like, rock on. It sounds so good, okay? So anyway, all of us are here because we love music. We love music. And at the end of this class, my greatest goal for y'all is that you would be more passionate about music. You're already passionate about it but I want you to absolutely be thrilled with music and thrive on your instrument. And because my parents forced me to play piano, when I got to high school, I started playing when I was nine, when I got to high school and first heard a guitarist by the name of, anyone ever heard of Randy Rhodes, right? Ozzy Osbourne, <laughs> you're clapping, right? And you knew Andre Segovia. And Randy Rhodes, wherever he went to tour with Ozzy Osbourne, he was a guitarist for a couple of years, a couple albums, and he died tragically. Wherever he would go, where they would tour, he would go to the local university and he would find the classical guitar instructor because he knew those guys were the best, or girls. And he would get together with them and take lessons. Same with, anyone ever heard of the band Slayer? Anyone? Right? Kerry King totally knows music theory. So I don't want to scare you off here. My goal is to make guitar exciting for you. To make it really, really exciting to where you want to pursue it. And if possible, maybe it might lead on to this. <laughs> I love the piano. It's the greatest instrument I know of, okay? So welcome to the Meadow Vista Placer County guitar class with moi, George Finley. What you need, what's that? There you go. You can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but can't pick your friend's nose. All right, you need a pick. Now I recommend, this is my recommendation, this pick right here is kind of thin. It helps you strum easier, okay? We're gonna learn all sorts of cool techniques and I hope that you find my teaching style uh, something that makes you wanna keep coming back, all right? But definitely, if you, if you are parents, make sure you keep your kids interested by sitting next to them and helping them practice. All right, what's that called? A music stand. Now, how many of you brought music stands tonight? Oh, amazing. Wow, that's shocking. That's incredible. It's hard. It's, seriously, it's hard when you're, you know, looking at stuff or looking at a sheet, piece of sheet music to set it on your lap. And every once in a while, we will have some music and it might be a chord chart. How many of you have ever seen or know what a chord chart is? Anyone? Yeah, it's where you have the lyrics and then the chord, G, C, D, over any given syllable or lyric. Okay, so you'll, you'll probably want to get a music stand. And I say 1357, anyone buy that one? Yeah, a few of you, okay. And then what's that? 
a guitar tuner. There is nothing more disturbing to the ear than an out of tune guitar. <laughs> Does everybody agree? It's like this. So this sounds in tune. Now if I take my G and I play this. Uh, Doesn't that sound terrible? So we want your guitar in tune. And we'll learn how to, anyone know what song that was? Say it again. Back in black. I know. <laughs> and then. There we go. All right. So you need a tuner, and it's only $9.99. Anyone get one cheaper? Let me say something. Anyone heard of Timu or Timu, however you pronounce it? It's kind of sketchy. It's kind of sketchy. Like I gave them my credit card and my email and I was scared. <laughs> I was actually scared. So this one right here, if you see it, it's $9.99. It's not from Timu, it's from something else. So I, I don't mean to bring down their stock, if they even have a stock, I don't even know. But it's super popular. Uh, one of my nieces absolutely loves it. I don't even know how. I tried to order a pair of, you know, $150 shoes for $8, and, I, and all of a sudden I started getting all these, okay, uh, do this and you'll get points. Refer a friend. <laughs> it was really crazy. So I would probably not use them. What does that represent? Email. <laughs> Okay, I do need your email address. Make sure you give me your email address because there are some really cool things. What's that? All right, so you can receive my messages via email or your smartphone. Okay, we're, we're in a technological age and if we're not using email or a smartphone, we might be behind the times. I'm just saying, okay? All right, which instrument do you want to play around the campfire? Raise your hand. Okay, what? Bongos. Bo <laughs> there you go. Bongos. That's cool. <clears throat> wow. So you've been to Africa, I take it. No, what? <laughs> you've been to Africa? No. <laughs> no? Okay. All right, bongos. I I guitar, so right, right, exactly. So you have to be thinking in your mind what is easy to carry around? What, who else? What, what would you want to take? Yes. Okay, fiddle and mandolin. Now, with the fiddle, my dad played fiddle. So you, you can play, it's mostly what we call monophonic, one voice, right? It's hard to play chords and accompany people while they're singing. And usually at a campfire, what do you do? Kumbaya, right? We do stuff like that. So the violin, it's kind of hard to do that. What other instrument could you take? Huh? Harmonica. That might work. That might work. Have you ever led music with a harmonica? Yeah. I rest my case. Any others? What? Guitar. Yes! Yes! Just like this. Watch this. Check this out. <laughs> now, how hard is it to take a piano to a campfire? It's very, very difficult. Okay? So just say no to taking a piano to a campfire. That's more like it. It's a, an amazing instrument. And it unifies people. It brings them together. One of the most fun things, or I like to say funnest, that I have ever done <clears throat> is get around a campfire with five, 10, 20 people and play and sing songs or have a jam session. Anyone ever been in a jam session? It's a blast. It's a total blast. You, you get hacks, absolutely, and you just enjoy it. Some of you might want to drink a beer or four, and you enjoy it more. <laughs> but playing around a campfire is absolutely phenomenal, all right? Okay, now, because th this is the one lesson, the one class where I talk a lot. We don't do as much playing. We are going to do some playing, I promise. But I want to sort of set 
the ground rules, not really rules, but just set a foundation where we're excited to come back every week. I want you to be excited. I want you to come back. I want you to have passion about music. And what you see here is a smiling face, right? It's a smiling face. So if I play a chord, and I smile, it sounds happy, doesn't it? We're happy, no political debates, no religious debates, and no debates about who should win the Super Bowl. We're just all happy. Oh, that's devastating. Divorce. Shame. Prison time. Morphine addiction. I know you're probably going, what? <laughs> I've done all those except prison time. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, no, I'm not kidding. I haven't done prison time. <laughs> That's happy. You see that? Who is that guy? Jim Carrey. We all know him because of his wonderful smile. So when you play a chord that sounds happy, music is based upon two emotions, right? Happiness and sadness. Now you might be thinking, well, what about neutral? No smile, no sad face. It's just neutral. Rock and roll came from Asia, believe it or not. We'll talk about that later. But in Western music, we have happy and we have sad. Now, if you notice that face, what does it remind you of? How many of you have ever shed tears or gotten watery eyes by listening to a song that was in a happy key. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? We call them tears of joy. Y'all know it. Tears of joy. Music is the universal language. We fight about all kinds of things. But wow, music unites us in such a wonderful way. And those are chords, and we'll get to this. They're called major chords. They sound happy. They sound happy. But minor chords sound sad. My dog has leprosy. Right? Those are sad songs. Sa I, that's not true. I've never known of a dog to have leprosy. However, when you think of a song that really sounds sad, how many of you listen to um, Oh gosh, one of my favorite bands is Pink Floyd. And if you listen to the song Comfortably Numb or have seen the movie The Wall or listen to the album, the, the whole soundtrack, The Wall, it's about someone dealing with heroin addiction. And he's trying to climb that wall and he can't. I don't know how many of you struggle with drug addiction. Mwah, I have, and it's hard. And so they wrote a lot of songs that were sad sounding on the wall. And they affect us emotionally. Okay? That's the minor chord. Sorry. I wanted to use Jim Carrey and that was the only one I could find and it looks like he's vomiting. I don't need it. <laughs> but he's sad. You can see he's sad. All right. All right. Now we're going to get into the guitar. Are you ready? Does everybody have your guitar? I want you to hold it like this. Just hold it up or set it on your knee. All right. We want to get to know this sucker. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Your best friends are the ones who know you the most intimately 
and the ones you know the most intimately, right? Would you all agree? Okay. How do you think you're going to feel comfortable with your guitar? By getting to know it. If you don't spend time with your best friend, you can't get to know your best friend. Does everybody follow? Do you follow? Imagine being married and being away for two weeks at a time and coming back for a day. That would be a drag. You don't get to know that person that way. The best way to get to know a person is to what? Spend time with them, right? You spend time with them. You learn them. You, you, you feel them out, no pun intended, <laughs> right? And that's what you got to do with the guitar. So here are the parts of the guitar. You ready? Now, some of you, I know you already have played guitar, and maybe you might be better than I am. It's very possible. But listen, you're going to be my assistants. Because <laughs> we got a lot of people here. I don't know, what do we got? 40? Maybe 40 people? 50? I might need some tutors. Okay, some assistants. This part of the guitar is like this. It's called the body, right? This right here, hint, I'm giving you hints by the way. This is called the neck, okay? This part right here is called the head, right? And these are called the tuners. They're not ears. <laughs> How, who said ears? Who said, did anyone say ears? Oh, hallelujah. I was going to say, oh gosh, we have to have a sped section of this class. All right. I was sped, by the way. All right. So we get to know the body, the guitar, the neck, the head, the tuning pegs, or what some of the more advanced guitarists call machine heads, but we'll just call them tuning pegs. So this is the head, the neck, the body. Now watch, you see these little lines right here, these metal things? Does anyone know what those are called? Frets. What? Frets. They should make you fret. <laughs> Kidding. Don't worry. These are called frets. And so if these are called frets, what kind of board do you think these frets sit on? A fret board. And your fret boards are made, the guitars are made out of different types of wood. I'm not going to go there because there's so many different types of woods that are used for guitar. Now, right here is this little thing that the strings go over. Does everybody see it? What do you call that? Lack of what? Bridge. bridge. That's called a bridge. The strings go over the bridge here. And this big old thing right here that holds the bridge, anyone ever gone horseback riding? How many horseback riders? Okay, what do you sit on? It's a saddle. So this saddle holds the bridge. So you have the bridge, the saddle, the body, the neck, the frets, the fretboard, the head, and the tuning pegs. Everybody got that so far? All right. Now this round hole right here is just called the sound hole. It's the sound hole. It's where the sound comes out of your guitar. Now, I know that some of you may have, I don't know this for sure, but you may have brought an electric guitar. And that's okay as long as you bring an amp eventually. <laughs> and I know that's kind of hard to do. I recommend bringing an acoustic guitar. Acoustic means it produces sound by itself. An electric guitar means you need something to amplify the sound, to make it loud, okay? Allow the guitar to become your friend. Allow it to become your friend. And that's just a detailed uh, explanation of the different parts in the guitar, and I would be happy to email this out to you. All you have to do is request it. I'm not going to send out the PowerPoint unless you request it. If you request it, I'll send it to you, okay? All right. So, <laughs> this is where we get into elementary school. You're probably thinking, what? Why elementary school? I have found, as an educator, that the best way to teach students is to use their imagination and their thoughts. 
I have never been a fan of clone education. I don't believe in clones. I don't believe in looking at students and saying, you all have to be this way, cookie cutter students. That does not tap into your gifts. Every single one of you, I believe this with all my heart, with all my heart, every single one of you has gifts, unique, wonderful gifts that you need to tap into. The problem is, at a very young age, there are some teachers who don't do that. They don't seek to find the gifts in each individual student. They just teach according to what has been demanded of them by the principal, the state, the federal government. I want to go beyond that. I want to find out what your talents are, your individual talents are. And so the way I teach is kind of elementary. It's elementary, not to be confused with elementary school. It's elementary. When I come up with an acronym like, hmm, I can't think of one. What's your favorite acronym? Anyone, what? Say that again. N eight dynamite good by N O. There you go. Are you going to use that to memorize the strings? All right. In my middle school class, we said from left to right, which is the low string, right? Here it is. Low. That's the low E. That's the high E. Run to the hills. Just kidding. <laughs> I like Iron Maiden. Sorry. So E. Say it with me. E, A, D, G, B, E. So my middle school students came up with eating, they, this is one of them, eating apples daily gives boys energy. But that leaves out the girls. So I don't know what you come up with, but one of the things they, they came up with was birds for B. I don't know what it was. I can't even remember. But what I want you to do to memorize the strings is come up with something, okay? So what we're gonna do for five, maybe a little less than five minutes, I want y'all to come up with something that's gonna help you memorize the names of the strings. Come up with an acronym, okay? Just think to yourself. Take three to five minutes, and then I'm gonna call on you, okay? Think of it, think of something. Three to five minutes. And if you feel bold, raise your hand and tell me your little acronym. Anyone come up with one? Yes. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Say it again. Eat all day, get big easy. That's the funnest thing I've ever heard. And I'm glad you left out hiking. <laughs> Eat all day, get big easy. <laughs> That's great. That is great. An easy gain weight program. Okay. Come to George's guitar class and get fat. <laughs> all right. Let's get any others. Raise your hand. Seriously. Don't be ashamed of your little acronym. Dude, that's one of the best ones I've ever heard. Eat. But say it again. Eat a darn. Eat a darn good breakfast every day. Golly, you can make me famous. That's awesome. What's another one? Come on. What is it? Elephants and dogs got big gills. Got big gills? Ears. Oh, ears. Oh, oh, that's good. I like it. That's great. So. I, I, want, I'm, I want to pick at least three more, but are you seeing where I'm going with this? You came up with it, and it's going to help you for next week. Okay? Get, I want three more. Anyone? What? 
Did it shut off? Oh, wow, <laughs> magic. What's another? Yes, yes. Every angel does good before what? Wow, okay. That's a little abstract. That's kind of cool. <laughs> That's great. Angels are only good in the evening. <laughs> All right, another one? Come on, I need at least one more. That, that's a good one, isn't it? That is a really good one. Just give me one more, though. One more. Something unique. Don't be ashamed. It's okay. We're all family. We're going to make a lot of freaking mistakes in this class. Trust me. <laughs> you can even make up a word. <laughs> Anything? Come on, one more. Okay, am I going to have to pick on someone? Because this is, this is going to be the way you memorize this drink. I'm not a dog because I ain't ever going back east. <laughs> All right. So the following chart, I'm going to read it, contains the names of the strings. They are called open strings. All right. So when we play a chord, I'm just going to play a chord for you. If you know a G, feel free to play. When you play, these are called frets, and we put our fingers on the frets. Right? Put them on, yeah, between the back and back. Okay? But so we call them frets. So if we say, oh, I'm going to put my finger on the first fret, low E string. There it is. Okay? Well, if I play the string without putting a finger on it, it's what we call open. Okay? It's open. So E, that's open E. That's open A. That's open D. That's open G, out of tune. That's open B, and that is open E. So they're open. When you play them without putting your fingers on the frets, that's called open. Is everybody clear on that? Okay? Now, when you do play a chord and put your finger on the fret, what's the opposite of open? Close. Okay? So open, no fingers on the frets. Close, yeah. Whatever fingers are playing the frets, that's called close. Okay? I gotta take this. There we go. All right. (laughs) 
<laughs> I got to give a little story. When I was young, my mom and dad taught me pee pee and poo poo. <laughs> and they also taught me potty. And so I used to, when I was young, I was about, I don't know, two or three, and I'd go pee pee potty poo poo. <laughs> anyway. You're probably thinking, what's wrong with this loser minister guitar teacher? <laughs> he's a minister, he's a loser, he likes Iron Maiden, and he's a guitar teacher. What's wrong with him? Anyway, say it with me. Passion produces perseverance. Say it with me. Passion produces perseverance. I was taught you got to go to college. No, you don't. What you got to do is you got to find what you love so that you're not unhappy. Some of the unhappiest people I've ever met got their MBAs and they're making a truckload of money. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they're making a truckload of money and they're unhappy. Don't ever do that, okay? Follow your passion. If it makes you $30,000 a year, as long as you love what you're doing, do it. Because it's going to make you happy. And most likely, if you're happy and you're raising a family and they see that you're happy, they're probably going to be happy, right? So I raised my two boys that way. And man, it sucks because none of them are doing what I'm doing. <laughs> no, one of them is like an electrician. And then he, he was a year and a half from getting his journeyman. And he's like, no, I, I want to get my real estate license. You go, bro. You go. I love you to death. And you do what's on your heart. And the other one is a handyman. And he wants to flip houses. And he plays keyboards with me every Sunday morning here. Voluntarily. Voluntarily. And I told him if he didn't, he'd get kicked out of the house. But no, vol no. <laughs> he does. He's voluntary. He loves music. And he's a carpenter. He's a handyman. Do what you love and you will persevere. Does that make sense? Okay. And this is where we get to some hard stuff. All right, girls. I know. That's so misogynistic. Um, listen, because guys can grow long nails too. I'm just going to be straight up. Mostly, I've taught piano lessons. And you cannot play piano with long fingernails. You can't do it. My mom has never had long fingernails because she was a fine concert pianist. You just can't play piano with long fingernails. Now, if you notice, classical guitarists have long fingernails on this hand for picking, but short fingernails on this hand because if they have long fingernails, it clicks and they can't pay, play their notes properly. Did everybody follow? So I am totally fine if you grow your nails long on your right hand. I know some of you might be left-handed guitarists, but if you're a right-handed guitarist, your right hand can grow long nails. Your left hand, you can't do it. Now, mostly it's girls. Mostly it's girls who like to grow their nails. Again, I'm not trying to be some weird misogynistic person or gender discriminatory because some guys like to grow their nails long too. But in order to play guitar, whatever hand is playing on the neck, you have to cut your nails. Don't bite them. It's a bad habit and you can get E. coli. <laughs> okay? It's just a bad habit. I know, I'm like kind of being a hypocrite here because every morning when I drink my coffee, I do this. For some reason, I like to chew on my thumbs. Anyone bite your nails? Raise your hand. Come on, we're open here. All right, good. E. coli, folks. All right, so <laughs> use clippers, okay? And it won't hurt. I did this just the other night. Which hand was it? I don't know, one of them. I just, I bit it and then I peeled it and it just ripped off and it bled and it's sore. It's sore. Mostly, I use clippers. Use clippers to cut your nails. Everybody down with that? Okay, some of you are going, ah, I will never go to this class again. I have to have my nails. Okay, all right. So, there you go. Here is where 
we find out who shows up next week. Anyone ever shoveled dirt for a long period of time without gloves? And, it, and you hadn't shoveled before, and what do you get? Blisters. And they're painful. But eventually, if you do it enough, what do those blisters turn into? Calluses. Any of you do pull-ups? Back in high school, I used to be able to do 23, and my hands were filled with calluses, and it was no problem. Now, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Let's just say I don't have calluses. I'm a wuss. My son, my older son, he's a carpenter. He has these big, thick hands. He's a, he's a uh, professional arm wrestler. Believe it or not, he's 22 years old. He's just got these thick, calloused hands, and he can put up with it. Plumbers, sprinkler fitters, construction workers, carpenters, they have calluses. Guitar players, they have calluses, and they look like that. Do you see it? Isn't that crazy? You have to develop calluses, and they develop in the first two weeks of practice. The first two weeks of practice are going to be painful. Passion. Did I say Siri? No. What? Has it? Really? Hey Siri. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but seriously, you have to have calluses for guitar. And once over these two weeks, you develop your calluses, they're thick, there's no more pain, right? But during these first two weeks, no pain, no gain. If you have pain, you're going to get calluses, and the third week will be smooth sailing, and you'll probably finish this class. I lose most of my students. I, I'm serious. I don't mean to be a discouraging teacher to you, but the vast majority of the students who quit, quit in the first two weeks because they think, oh, I'll never get this. It hurts my fingers too much. Work through it. I don't know about you. I grew up with a mom who loved horses. She taught what's called dressage, right? The black hat, you know what I mean? English writing. It's English writing. She would take me to the river, riding horses, and you get what's called saddle sore. <laughs> Anyone ever heard of that? And man, I'm sitting there going, how does John Wayne do it? <laughs> but the more you ride, it's just like mountain biking. I don't mountain bike. My best friend mountain bikes. He says, come mountain biking with me in Bryce Canyon. I'm like, rock on, dude. That's so beautiful and sounds so fun. I got done and I was like, You got to do it a lot. They build calluses on their butt. We build calluses on our fingertips. Amen? Okay? That's what's going to get you through it. Work through these first two weeks. Don't be a wimp. <laughs> hey, Heidi. <laughs> build your calluses. All right. We're coming down to the last 10 minutes. Guitar finger names. On the right hand, these are just Spanish names for the names of the fingers. On the right hand, this is for when we get to the finger picking section, right? This, this, this kind of thing. Turn it up. Right? That's the right hand picking. P-I-M-A. Don't worry about that weird C-N thing. I don't know where that came from or what it means. But on the left hand, it's a little bit tricky because typically we think of one, two, three, four, five. Well, in guitar, it's one, two, three, four. Okay, do it with me. Lift up your left hand. One, two, that's offensive. <laughs> three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Those are the names of the fingers. So if I say to you, get your guitars out, get them out, put your first finger on the first fret on the G string. 
Don't go there. I know what some of you are thinking. We're going to say G string a lot in this class. It has nothing to do with what you're thinking. Okay? Put your first finger, first right G string. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Great question. Great question. Julie, right? Okay. This is so important. When you place your finger on the fret, the temptation is to play right in the middle, like that, right? But what do you hear? I used to tell my middle school students, that's called a mouse fart. Sounds gross, right? Or a don't. You don't play, listen, you don't play in the middle. You put your finger as close to the fret as possible and get rid of the mouse fart. No mouse fart. There it is. So now I want everybody to put your finger, your first finger, first fret, G string. Okay? Everybody got it? Okay. Now do it in the middle and play lightly. And let's hear the mouse fart. Hear it? Don't do that. Play right next to the fret. That's where you always play. You always play. Not the back side, not the head side. You play to the bridge side of the fret. And that will give you a clean sound. A clean, you want a clean guitar sound. Okay? All right, you ready to play? Fourth finger, fourth fret, High E string, not low, this one. Got it? Those are pretty long nails there. <laughs> Someone's going to cut their nail. Fourth fret, fourth fret. There you go, there you go, perfect, perfect. Got it, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Totally kidding, totally kidding. Don't use Percocet to play guitar. <laughs> Build your calluses, and I promise you, I promise, I absolutely promise, if you put in 30 minutes a day over the next two weeks, you will excel at guitar. Okay? I promise you. I promise you. So there we are. Have the open versus closed. I taught you that. And then there it is. That is the nightmare. You're thinking, what? What? I don't want nightmares. <laughs> Life is a mixture of nightmares and wonderful, beautiful dreams. And this is the nightmare. 
And it goes like this. Are you ready? So, when you play guitar, typically we're used to maybe, you know, let's see, what is it? I don't know.
we will spend the majority of those classes play. I wanted to lay the foundation today. Any questions at all? Really quick before we go. Yes, Julie. What's that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Any other? Yes. You were saying that we have to request the PDF and stuff like that? Or yeah. Do we email you and just. Yeah, you send me an email and say, Dude Sickle, can I have the PDF? Yeah. That person said, George. Whatever you do, don't call me pastor or minister. Call me George. Okay. Any other questions? All right. You're great. Yes. One question. Hold on. 30 minutes every day, five days a week. You get two days off. Any other questions? All right, man. Wait, wait, wait. Can I get one picture with y'all, a selfie? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Okay, everybody, say rock and roll. Rock and roll. All right, you guys have a great night. I'm so excited about this class.